Okay. Here we Wait, isn't Damocles the one from the from the challenge? Dude, I'm gonna be on maybe not, maybe not. Anyway. Um Dude, let's do a Zazel. Oh, let's do Samson Alt Path. Uh, Alt Path. Alt Path, true ending. Alt Path, Alt Path. We haven't played as regular Samson for a while, man. We gotta, we gotta knock out some, some stuff, you know. Anyway, long story short, I'm. <laughs> Everyone and, and like, again, I, I just think that there's like, you know, two wolves live inside of you. There's like one. Uh, wolf that's horny, and then there's one wolf that's like, you know, sane. Uh, I don't, the horny wolf never logs on to Twitter. He's just, you know, save that, different, different websites, I guess, save that need. So whenever I find myself on horny Twitter, it, it's very funny to me. Because you're in a completely, like, unemotional, sober mindset, and then you see a tweet that somebody wrote when they were worked up that was like, oh yeah, yeah, here's like my bank account number, don't steal my money <laughs> or do it, you deserve it, I'm garbage. I'm just like, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's actually hilarious. Like if somebody wrote that on a TV show, I would be like, please give this person a daytime Emmy. Unless they work for Ellen. And I'd say, please give them a hug. I'm happy with where that joke went. She was yelling at people in the workplace. Remember that? Anyway. <laughs> Minus two? That was good, man. Rerolls rocks. Rerolls rocks. Hold on, hold on. But I, I do agree, you know, because I, I guess, like, here's the way I understand it, and I'll leave it up to the experts in chat to correct me, but fetishes are, like, to my understanding, uh, maybe genetic plus during your formative years, something, you know, you had an experience where, like, a friend's older sister was wearing, uh, you know, like, dishwashing gloves and she tickled you or something like that and that like defined the rest of your life right like that defined um that you're like i want to be tickled in silicon dishwashing gloves for the rest of my life in if that's the case financial domination you got freaking hosed man because i gotta tell you that is like a terrible one to have from an outsider's perspective most people, people's fetishes maybe occasionally lead to them being embarrassed uh, when they have to bring it up to somebody, or I guess it's exposed or something like that. Financial domination seems like you just lose like a lot of money, you know? For 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 not, I guess for gratification, but like it seems like you could screw up your life pretty bad. <laughs> Right? Like, I don't know, maybe? But isn't that like what you want? Like, don't you want it to ruin your life? No? Kind of? I, I don't know if you are making the point that you think you're making. If you're like, well, what's the difference between that and gambling addiction? I mean, like... If you're comparing your fetish to, like, a, a life-destroying addiction, like, I... I mean, it seems like a bad comparison, I guess, is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, I, I gotta play here, because I think Blood Rites is pretty sick. Right, but, I, but I gotta play first. I gotta play. Anyway, that's that's all I got. It's just occasionally I find myself there on Twitter. It's always like I get four clicks deep. Like, you know, somebody tweets me, I look at their profile, uh, and then like some they tweet somebody else seven times a day, and then I click on their profile to be like, what makes this person so interesting? And that's where I end up going down the the rabbit hole.
That's not suspicious at all, man. You you do not at all have to seek out horny internet. Horny internet seeks you out at all opportunities. I wish you had to go looking for it. If I tweet you my top 40 albums, would you rate my taste? Um, if... Okay, I'm gonna be hyper-specific on this, okay? You're not allowed to put it in a twit longer. Literally, I want to see, like, a notepad document top 40. Uh, with a screenshot of that, because it's not gonna pass the character limit on Twitter. Um, a screenshot of a notepad document of your top 40. And if you add, if you try to add any context, I'm gonna close the tweet immediately. Like, if you try to be like, well, I used to think that Kid A was number one, but then, like, uh, it's closed. I'm, I got, I got things to do, I got walks to take. Okay, just pop this down. We're safe, man. I thought maybe you would hit the secret room. 24 hour ban if the list sucks. I would never do that. You, you, you're defined by more than just your taste in music. I really, like, honestly, I would rather hang out with somebody who uh, has terrible taste in music but is cool about it than somebody who has, like, amazing taste in music but is, like, constantly like, oh, yeah, I used to listen to them, but, like, basically myself. Um, I really thought when Johnny Marr hit the... When he joined the band, they were going to go through a Modest mouse -assance, but instead they just continued to churn out alt-pop garbage. So sad. That's me telling me to log off, weirdo. Nice record collection, Liz. It's a little meat and potatoes. The last run was so good that this... I'm, like, mad at this one. Chib, what's your favorite album of all time? I'm not gonna judge it. I'm probably not even gonna know what it is. The last... I, I, I listen to new music constantly until a little band called Passion Pit came out, and I was like, this is too avant-garde for me. It's like he's screaming. Why don't you just sing nicely, man? Why are you screaming? A, you know, it's got all... It, it's disharmonious, like... Whatever happened to, like, you know, this old man, he played one. Something, something on his thumb and a something, something, give a dog a bone. Something, something coming home. Yeah, yeah, see, rat jam. That still gets the people rat jamming. Chip, there's been no answer hither to this point. Come on, man. I love screaming and yelling. Aw, yeah. What are you talking about, Malf? What are you talking about? I don't know my favorite album. You better come up with one, or I'm going to come up with one for you, and you're not going to like it. Because right now, you have five seconds before it becomes Silver Side Up by Nickelback. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Please welcome Nickelback's biggest fan, Chib Space Lee. All right, he he actually he came out with an album, but I've never heard of it, so I, he remains Nickelback's number one fan in my mind. Um, the Beatles. Why don't you name something the rest of us have heard of, Chibli? Okay, I'm just gonna be honest, based on that death, I'm not sure we're gonna get to the puzzle game today. <laughs> but I promise the docket is gas, okay? We got a little too Zoms. Zoms dominated a little bit too much. The docket for the rest of the week is gas, okay? I promise you. Ah. 
Zombie Nation. Crumb is one of my favorite bands. You talking about uh, Crumps? Nutty Professor 2, the Crumps? I used to pump Cat Bambino when I was 13. What the heck does it... Jesse, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> Which one of those words are proper nouns? I don't know. And now, I'm sorry, I recently stopped watching your streams because I've been watching nothing but Kitchen Nightmares. You don't need to apologize for that. Kitchen Nightmares is a great show. I mean, just in general, like, you should never feel compelled to have to watch everything that I make. Obviously, it's in my interest if you do. Um, but if you're ever, like, I don't feel like watching a streamer talk about stuff that they don't know. To Like, oh my god, I can't stand the streamer constantly talking about the Canadian vaccine rollout. It just drives me crazy. Instead, I'm going to watch, like, a movie that costs $700 million to make and 3,000 people worked on full-time for five years. I'm like, you know what? I understand. That makes that makes perfect sense. Just drop your prime sub <laughs> on the way out and come back when, when the mood strikes you. I'll still be here, probably. I know how it goes. You wash in, you wash out, you wash in, you wash out. I'm the same way when it comes to... I wouldn't say when it comes to streamers, because, like, my, my streamer quotient is, like, you know, I'm, like, full, but in a good way. There's always someone I want to watch that's live, and they're usually playing a game I want to watch. But, like, especially for, like, podcasts and stuff like this, I'll be like, oh, it's the greatest podcast of all time. And then, like, a week later, I'm like, I hate this guy. Not really, but... <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to listen to him anymore. I want to listen to something else. We are in a, a game desert drought, though. Like, man, it is crazy. I And I, I know you're like, you know, what about Resident Evil 8 and what about Mass Effect? Yeah. What about them? My thoughts exactly. No Eddie room? Insulting. Insulting. It's just like, a, a Mario Golf is like, you know in um, the a music video for Destroyer's Kaput, where they do the Lawrence of Arabia thing, where um, the guy's, Peter O'Toole's walking through the desert, and he sees like all those uh, ladies going like, like this, and then they're holding pitchers of water, and they give him the water, and then when he drinks it, it's just sand. That's what I'm worried is going to happen about um, Mario Golf. It looks awesome. It's my guiding star on the horizon. Thank you. If it's bad, I'm going to become Lawrence of Arabia. Or if they do something like, you know, you can't play with your friends online until... You beat the campaign! I'm, I'm gonna be like, please get me Shigeru Miyamoto on the telephone. I just wanna talk. I just wanna have a conversation. I think it's gonna be sick though. Can I also tell you? It might be stream poison, but I will play the campaign mode of Mario Golf. Admittedly, it was a long time ago. But, like, Christmas 1998 or 1999, my uncle got me Mario Golf for the Game Boy Color. I didn't even know that I wanted it. He was just like, hey, I know you like video games, so, like, the guy at the EB Games recommended this. It was a, it was a genius move. I played the crap out of that game. It, it was not just a great golf game, but a wonderful RPG. Um... Moving box, huh? The the EB Games guy did me a solid there, no question about that.
We need to save bombs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. 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 Um. Oh, hello. Wow. What a cool looking baby. What a cool looking baby. May I, may I add to, uh, game drought? Game drought. Oh, what, what you got there? Mario Golf. Mario, yeah. We were just talking about it. Looking forward to Mario Golf. I was just saying how I, uh, as a child, I got the uh, Mario Golf for Game Boy Color, and it was fantastic. It's legitimately is probably like in my top three RPGs I've ever played. I know that sounds insane. I think it had a great influence on my life as a consumer. Oh, bless you. I almost died. That would have been embarrassing. Die in front of the baby. Play Cook Star, Cooking Mama. Cooking Mama, Cookstar. Yeah. It, it does your switch work today? Did it? Did it explode after the? Uh... No, no, they fixed <laughs> it. They fixed it. Hello, honey. Lots of people in my chat to Hello. say, by you playing this game, you <laughs> made the dev rich with the Bitcoin. Yeah, it's okay. Bitcoin's down like twenty percent today, so jokes on them. <laughs> they <it's> some rumors. <laughs> I hope they sold. I hope they converted it to USDT. Otherwise, geez louise. Jeez louise. Phil, excuse me? I also have Pokemon Snap. I bought it. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't think I'm like a Pokemon Snap kind of guy. My kid just says I, that's like I watched a little of it and I was like, I think it's kind of boring. <laughs> but I think like if you really into, I saw a great clip that the Twitch Twitter account posted. Um, that was like people crying when they saw. Oh, thank you. Oh, it was like people crying when they saw cute things in the game. And I was like, that's pretty good. But I think if you don't have that kind of emotional connection to the Pokemon, then... Ooh. Ooh, baby. <laughs> I, uh, well, I'm sorted for, for this upcoming week. For, for like, Thursday, Friday, because we got a little, a little sponsored, uh, little sponsored magic coming. Not Magic the Gathering, but, like, I mean, if they're, if they're listening, I would, might consider it, but, um... Got very cool stuff coming up in the next couple of days. Very cool. And next week as well. Next week is also going to be busy. You have made an S of peace. I can't say the word. I don't want to swear in front of the baby. Did she say swear pencil? Square pencil? What? No, nah, you. Uh, it's the to explain the the meme would be it's it's too much. It would it it would take the magic away. Do you? I I hear like the howling of a wolf. Is that a? <laughs> do you hear that? Is that? That I don't know. If that's in game. I heard something going like. I don't think it's in game. I think you you harboring wolves in our house. Did you hit chat? Did you hear that? And did you hear it in game or through my microphone? I guess how would you tell? But <laughs> Mario Golf's gonna be sick though. I'm looking forward to that. But like I have reached the point where like I I go to Twitch and I try to figure out like who to watch and I'm like, man, it's just. I, I, I always, and don't, this is not an insult by any stretch of the imagination, Jay, but, like, it's always going to be Jay playing Repentance, because, like, you know, we, we've entered into that phase where, like, the streamers are now, there's nothing new, and they probably already finished Resident Evil 8 by now. Like, they're they're falling back on their old standbys, and I was like, I do this auto chess, I can't, I can't go back, I can't go back there. 
No, I, I wish I could watch more Mouth, but he's live in the in the morning, which is not a it's not a conducive time for me. And then I try to watch uh, Dan in the like ten minutes before my stream starts. I can't watch him inside of the shop anymore, man. I, I just can't. <laughs> can't be done. I do need some bombs though. Hey Aussie fish, thanks for the raid. Appreciate it. We're here, like, honestly being embarrassingly bad at the Binding of Isaac for somebody who's invested so much of my life into it. I'm doing my best, but it's, uh, I don't know if it's working out that well. Yeah, Chib, you need to become a full-blown uh, gambling addict, I think. Like, you, if, if you could just be live, like, 16 hours a day on an online casino, that would, I would watch all the time. But only when you play Crazy Time. If I said that too. It's, it's great content. When he said he's too poor to play Crazy Time anymore. Well, if he was good at it, then he could, uh, he could win. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Ooh. Kate, people are, they're, they're on your case a little bit. They're like, I watched the LaCroix video. It was fun, but um, I'm waiting with bated breath to find out how you feel about apricot. Yeah. The, the apricot LaCroix. You know what it is? You know in Endgame when uh, Loki grabs the Tesseract and then just escapes into the ether? That's like what you did with the apricot. You created like a sequel to the video now. You dropped a little breadcrumb for the future that I can use. I, I can I can pump up people's enjoyment as a result. You're welcome. Yeah, no, no question. That was it was a masterstroke of entertainment. Please don't hit me. Yeah, we need a mid-credits scene. That's the we're we're kind of in like an unprecedented media drought. Like even on the movie side, like. No one's like, oh, in two weeks, like, the new Marvel thing comes out. <laughs> oh, let's go. She's very happy. She's, she's loving it. No, no! They don't do damage. It's okay, they don't do damage. <laughs> it's a happy baby. It did no damage. It did no damage. I feel like 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 games, TV, and movies like are now in an, an unprecedented like low. Not, not L-U-L, capital, capital U. You know what I mean. L-U-L-L. -L. I forgot, I forgot how it's spelled now, because I've said the other lull so much. Okay. Goodbye, baby. I'll see you in 54 minutes. Yeah, like, I, right now, it's not even close. Like, obviously, I'm heavily biased. Why did I even go in here? I used a bomb, too. I must be stupid. Um, it's all right. We'll find another one. <laughs> Sorry. Right, we'll, find, we'll find another one. Um, but, like, it's not even close, man. Repentance is, like, game of the year 2021 by far. And I feel like... The way that you know it's the game of the year is that people are the only argument they're gonna have is not that there's another game that's better. They're gonna be like, oh, it's not a real game, it's just DLC. It's just an expansion. Like, so you're admitting it's the best. As soon as we get into that kind of semantic minutia, as soon as it becomes clear that you don't respect the silence that serves as the foundation of creativity, then. You know, this is what happens. Because you're flat. My voice is kind of like I can feel it getting a little 
over overused because I haven't had any hydration over the course of the stream today, um, which is fine. But uh, I, I don't want to do the your flat voice. Okay, fine, I'll do it. I went to NYU film school, sucker. I've studied classically. I've studied contemporaneously. You're nothing. You can't even carry a note, much less a tune. This is one of the most important buildings in the world. Let me rephrase. Hold on. <clears throat> this is one of the most important pieces of architecture in the world. And you defile it with your presence. Okay. That's, that's it, though. Unless... Unless we get a lot of plus twos in which... Okay, fine. But... <laughs> I'm becoming like, um, th this stream is becoming Gallagher. It's just increasingly angry and bitter. And everyone in the audience is like, just waiting for the one impression that smacks. They're all, they all wearing their parka they bought in the lobby going like, <laughs> just, Hey, when are you going to smash a watermelon? Gallagher's taking long drags off of a cigarette talking about like, how much he hates his ex-wife or something like that. Honey, I thought this guy smashes watermelons with a sledgehammer or something. Why is he just talking about it? how he doesn't get to see his kids anymore? Could just I can't, I can't I can't hit you, man. I can't hit you. I can't hit you. I'm just farming uh bloody lust right now. That's gaming, man. That's not gaming. Thanks for the bloody lust. Really appreciate it. You know what? Thanks for the bloody lust. He doesn't own the watermelon bit anymore. He sold it to his brother. What the heck are you talking about? Do you know the clip of the bowler saying, Who do you think you are? I am. No. Yes! <laughs> oh... Night of the Roxbury. Okay, yeah, I'll just get hit by you. Again. I think... Chib, feel free to... I know you're fishing on Twitter. I, I see you posting that same tweet, like, at prime hours every single day. Like, animals are so funny. Like, you could name a cat Apple iPhone 2 and nobody would stop you. So I got here's Here's a tweet for you, okay? And it's not really a tweet. It's, it's a genre. More like a genre of Twitter, I would say. Um... I think any time you see, like, a major news outlet make a headline on Twitter that's, like, a question, you should reply and go, no. And then make another reply to that that says, yes. It would kill, man. It would kill. You could, if you wanted to, put a picture of Doug and Steve Butabi from Night at the Roxbury underneath it. I want it, please. I would like it, please. I will pay for it. You Now you're gonna pay for it. First I was gonna pay, now you're gonna pay. And then you're all gonna pay. You, you, me, me, you, you. Dude, the movie, I'm realizing I was wrong. It's kind of good. But I will say, I know I talked about this in an Isaac episode, so I apologize. On the other hand, um, I don't apologize because it needs to be said. Chris Kattan, probably the actual legitimate worst actor in Hollywood history. Is actually... I know you're gonna say Rob Schneider. He's worse than Rob Schneider. Okay, French Stewart is really not a good actor. I will give you that. However, French Stewart also had literally like one starring role. I don't even remember the name of the movie, but it's something like Love Stinks. But I'm pretty sure Love Stinks is like... Uh, I'm pretty sure that's actually a David Spade movie. 
That's true, he is the Inspector Gadget in Inspector Gadget 2 when they couldn't get Matthew Broderick. But still, I mean, like, that's a direct-to-video release for kids. Like, Chris Kattan is a, is a horrible actor. French Stewart is also a major part of Home Alone 3, yes. Or maybe 4, now that I... Yeah, Home Alone 4, apparently. That's crazy. Take that back about Rob Schneider. He went to my high school and came to our school and played the trombone once. That's hilarious, man. Even if you were a fan of Rob Schneider, you're like... Rob Schneider's playing at the assembly tomorrow. You're probably hoping that he's going to show up and be like, You can do it! Instead, he shows up and he's playing the freaking... He's playing the trombone? <laughs> what is... That's not what he's famous for. That's not what he's known for. What are you doing? You're flat. No talent. <sighs> I'm going to the next floor. Smash a watermelon already. Hey, hey, smash a melon. Hey, S smash a watermelon. His latest stand-up is pretty bad. Dude, I was thinking about it the other day. Like, I went deep enough on uh, Amazon Prime Video that they started to show me stand-up comedy. And I was like, you gotta know this is, like, the bottom of the barrel, right? Like, Netflix stand-up comedy is already, like, there's a pretty decent chance it's not gonna be good. If Netflix said no to your stand-up comedy special and then you find yourself on Amazon Prime Video... Oh my god, that's gotta be like a a soul-searching moment, right? Heavy oof. Like, I feel like if you see that a special's on HBO, you're like, there's a this thing's got a chance. Netflix, you're like 50-50. They've had some amazing stuff, and, you know, they've had some uneven stuff. It's a business. Amazon Prime, I'm like, oh my god, so no one else would take it, right? Chaos card. Well, well, well. Please don't be six wave boss. I think I think we save chaos here. I think we use it immediately. I am not going to die. You're going to die because I'm going to kill you. You can chaos card Gideon. Can I tell you something? I don't know who's Gideon. Isn't that the kid from the Righteous Gemstones? Six Wave Boss. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. One of these days, I'm going to learn their their names. Debate. Gideon is from S Scott Pilgrim. Absolutely correct. In this house, we stand uh, Jason Schwartzman. In this house, we stand Jason Schwartzman. I'll, I said it twice because I mean it. 2x. Who? Um, the lead actor from I Heart Huckabees. The male lead from the Claire Danes, Steve Martin movie, uh, Shop Girl. He plays Cool Ethan in the 2001 film Slackers. I love you, but I hate you. Which brings to mind how much I love you. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sorry that you had to settle for Dave, the one-dimensional man. He's filed under sucker in my little <laughs> Yeah, he's in Sofia Coppola's Marie Antoinette. He plays Natalie Portman's lover in the short that runs before the Darjeeling Limited. And also he's in the Darjeeling Limited. He was the lead actor on the HBO series with Ted Danson and Zach Galifianakis called Bored to Death. 
Are you listening? Hello? In the Adam Sandler movie, Funny People? He plays the actor who got famous on a, a fictitious sitcom called Yo Teach. Are you paying attention? Am I talking to myself here? He's been in other stuff. Oh yeah, he was um, he was Max in Rushmore, one of the greatest movies of all time. Book of Secrets. Here's a secret. Get bent. Nobody likes you. That's. I think I've named every Jason Schwartzman property at this point. Yeah, wasn't he like the drummer in Phantom Planet? The band that uh, sings California, the theme song to the OC. That's right, he was in Spun. I mean, like, someone is like, what's the bit here? There's no bit. I'm just trying to explain to you who Jason Schwartzman is. And people are hitting me with crickets. You'd know him if you saw him. That's I, I feel 100% confident in that. You'd know him if you saw him. There, there's no bit. <laughs> there's, there's no words on it. He was a regular on the Colgate Comedy Hour? Yeah, yeah. Paul Bufano! Paul Bufano! He was friends with Mel Blanc, the guy who did the voice of the Roadrunner. Meep, meep. Don't insult Jason Schwartzman. I just told you he's my best friend. Don't say he looks like a knockoff Jared Leto. Although, honestly, that's probably like the least insulting insult anyone could ever say. If anyone ever came up to me and was like, hey, you look like a slightly uglier Jared Leto, I would be like, thank you. This is the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. One of the most, you know, notoriously handsome leading men of our generation. I appreciate that a great deal. <laughs> You look like a knockoff George Clooney, dummy. Yeah, when you're bald, you can't really get away with that, man. Best I get, sometimes people will be like, yo, you look like the guy from Kingsman. Not, not Eggsy, but you know, the one Take Me Home Country Roads. And I'm like, yeah, Mark Strong. I know, I've, yeah, I've heard it before. It's complimentary, Mark Strong, he's a, he's a good looking guy. No, I, I used to get Stanley Tucci, but now he's turned into kind of like a middle-aged uh, sex symbol. And now people are like, you look like if you like worked hard, you could resemble Stanley Tucci. And I'm like, that's, that's very nice. Thank you. But there's a long road. There's a long <laughs> road in front of us. <laughs> but yeah, right now I'm kind of Dean. I'd settle for Dean Norris, man. I'd settle for Dean Norris. Don't lie to me, Walt. You know what I just found out? You're, you're going to think that I lost my mind, but I think they kind of look similar. Um, Hank's wife from Breaking Bad and the, the younger lady, I'm admitting she's younger, from Schitt's Creek are two different people. I thought for, not for a long time, but for a little bit in my head, I was like, I recognize her from something. And then I realized I didn't recognize her. I recognized that she looked like somebody else. She looks like, they do not look alike. What are you talking about? You have non-face phasia? You don't know what you're talking about. You know not the evil with which you speak. I did not see Dean Norris's tweet that just says X -E S E X space G I F S. I did not see that. But I mean, who amongst us 
Let, let he amongst us without sin pass the first kidney stone. The tweet is still up. <laughs> that is kind of great, though. Ooh, that is pretty funny. I was on Cameo yesterday. You know, you know what I would really love to see? And justifiably, Cameo does not let you do this. But I would love to see the the lowest rated uh, cameo professionals on the site. You can see highest rated, um, aka what kind of celebrities haven't been doing too much work lately. Uh, usually they have a 24 hour turnaround time, but they won't let you sort high to low, or low to high, I should say. And I don't have that kind of time for the scrolling, man. But I would love to buy cameos from, like, the people who have the lowest rating on the website. Because I think it would make for the funniest content you could ever have. Bro, I'm about to use my Chaos card here. What a shot. You should do cameos. I mean, honestly... I'm not going to say never. I'm very cynical about the business model, but the the checks still cash, I'm sure. Tinted rock. The only thing is, I I you could frame it as an ethical thing, I suppose, but like I I don't know if I would be comfortable pricing myself at what I think people would pay. Instead, I would price myself at what I think I'm worth, and then I think I would end up doing cameos, like, way more often than I'd like. So instead, in my head, I'm like, okay, then you price it at a level where you're like, you maybe end up doing, like, a couple cameos a week instead of doing ten cameos a day. But then I'm like, oh, man, I'm not gonna feel good if somebody's, like... You know, hey, here's like $300. Can you wish my boyfriend a happy birthday? That's... I don't know if I can sleep at night, man. On the other hand... <laughs> I mean, I could just buy a better bed. <laughs> Maybe I'd sleep like a baby. Now that I think about it for two seconds. It is... Like, Cameo is weird. But I also like... Um, did you know that- here's something on Cameo that I found hilarious. Did you know that there's like four different actors who played the Night King and they're all on Cameo using a different photo of the Night King? I wonder if they have- like, I know that there's like... the original actor and then there's like, you know, frail old man who was the Night King for a little bit. And then there was, uh... You know, like... Swedish model or something like that. I wonder if they have to compete with each other like on price or something like that Because you know like when somebody's a big fan of Game of Thrones They're not gonna get a cameo from a Night King and be like, oh Sweetie you ruined my birthday. This is the wrong Night King This isn't this isn't my favorite Night King like what's wrong with you? Okay, I'll take it. So I bet they have to... I bet they have to compete on price. I bet they have to be like, Oh, well, the original Night King is offering... Like, his cameos are only like 75 bucks, so I gotta pop in here at like the 70s or something. Ruined? Ruined? Saved? I don't know. Anyway, it's just just things to things to think about. <laughs> yeah, imagine if you got one from all of them. I will say, you know, it surprised me, but I guess it's it's more of like it's less about like she's got a hugely high opinion of herself, and more like maybe she's busy and doesn't want to do a lot of cameos. The most expensive actor from The Office is Jan Levinson Gould. And I think she charges like 350 or 400 bucks per cameo. I'm like, that's, that's pricey. 
Don't get me wrong. It's also, it's a character from the show that people would be like, that's Jan Levinson Gould. There were a couple people from The Office on there where I was like, like Bob Vance was on there and he was maybe like a hundred bucks. And I was like, people would be like, that's cute. You got a, you got a cameo from Bob Vance. But um, some of them, they were like, I played like guy who asks Pam to sign for package season four, episode eight. And you're like, come on, man, that's not w worth 20 bucks. Like, I'm sorry <laughs> to tell you, nobody out there is like, hey, for my birthday, like my favorite actor is <laughs> guy that asked Pam for a, a signature on the package season four, episode eight. But I think Cameo's kind of cool. Like... Just for like... I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> but it's... I Over the years, I've mellowed on it. From being like... This is a sign of the impending dystopia. To being more like... Eh, you know, if somebody wants to pay... 200 bucks for, you know, an NFL quarterback to say happy birthday. There's worse things you could do with your money, probably. Could be, could be fun. Why not? Until you lose the video, dude. And plus, that's how that Dean Norris video came came to pass, right? So really, you could just pay Dean Norris like, you know, two hundred, three hundred bucks, and he'll say whatever you want. I also, one of the things I respect about Cameo is that it's like, so, like, let me put it this way. If I gave you the choice in, in, a, in a rational market between like one lobster tail and five steaks, we would get to a level where like eventually you're like, I'll take the lobster tail. Then if I was like, what if I double it? What if it's 10 steaks? You're going to be like, I really like lobster. I'm going to stick with the lobster for now. What if I was like a million steaks? You'd be like, okay, fine, I'll take the stakes. But on cameo, that's not how it works. If you want a, a if you want a cameo from Ice Cube, no amount of cameos from MC Ren are gonna replace that for you. Even if I was like, well, I couldn't. Ice Cube's cameos were seven hundred and fifty dollars, but MC Ren's charging twenty five bucks. So I just got you 60 MC Ren cameos instead. You would be like, I really think I'd be better off with just one ice cube, honestly. Don't don't hit me. Like, come on, man. Just give me a gift card next time to cameo. Hey, 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 hey. I know your game. That was just a genius maneuver. I can't be mad. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the social network cameo. I don't know. I would feel weird, though, for sure. Because I don't know, like... I don't know who you are, but I guess I've recognized that, like, it doesn't matter. Like, the, you don't buy the cameo to be like, oh, wow, the the soup Nazi said happy birthday to me. It's actually, like, a completely selfish transaction where you're just like, I got a video of the soup Nazi saying my name. And it's like, that's what it's all about. It's not actually about the actor on the other side. It's about, like, the guy from the television said my name. So, I am it's weird, but well, maybe we'll strike while the iron's hot. Let's 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 sign up for that cameo account immediately. <laughs> okay, hold on. Doesn't matter. Don't lie to me, Walt. It's a kind of financial domination. Well, when you put it that way, now I know that there's, it's a viable industry. Saved. 
I mean, there's like a lot of real actors on it too. Like Ice Cube's on it, man. I'm not saying that means it is legit, but <laughs> I don't understand it. It's a foreign concept to me. It's kind of a foreign concept to me too, but I'm just like, you know, the world's constantly changing, man. Yeah, like it does. It kind of feels the same as like when you watch a streamer and they spend all their time like thanking subscribers, but they clearly like it. The information of the subscriber name like never enters their brain. It just is like it's words on a screen. We're keeping that in like the in the cache, and now it's gone. You know, like if you ask them ten seconds later what they what they just said, they would be like, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. On the other hand, money is the other part of that, so. What boss was on the last floor? <laughs> oh, son of a... Hold on. No, it was mom. It was mom. Yeah, yeah. You thought you could get me. And on any other floor, it like probably would have worked. But on this one... Not this one. That would have been embarrassing. Dunk. Dunk. My name is Martin. Why did you say that name? You ever gotten that one? I'm sorry. Big ups to people watching right now. There's probably a few. Big ups to the Marthas. Big ups to the Karens. Sucks that your names have been taken through the mud over the course of the, of the past half decade or so. We're gonna get through this, okay? Big ups to the to the Donalds out there. <laughs> you know, there's probably I, and you shouldn't even say it, but I bet there's like people out there whose last names are just like you know they're like, hey, my name's like. Just just go with me on the context of this bit, okay? Because like, I'll admit it's not great, but it's also kind of funny. You know, there's like some guys out there that are just named. Jeffrey Epstein and they're like man this has been like a really bad and annoying like decade for my name you're like my mom named me Jeffrey Epstein I'm I'm an accountant and then everybody that comes into my office is like huh Jeffrey Epstein comma chartered accountant huh any relation to the and you're like Please. I, I just can't. I've, I've heard it all, man. Yeah, Michael Bolton. <laughs> Why should I change my name? He's the one who sucks. But, like, Michael Bolton is, like, at least it's just a singer. I meant what I said on Monday. I know it's a brave stance, but when I said that it makes no sense that, uh... Bill Gates was getting marriage advice from the worst human being on planet Earth. I mean, like, Jeffrey Epstein, that's, that's a really bad name to have. Not bad, just unfortunate, I guess, is a, is a way to describe it. Never think about it, but man, there's gotta be... There's gotta be, like... A few, like... I mean, I, I bet if your name is, if you're like an accountant or something like that, I'm just going to accountant as like my go-to joke. But like your name is like, you know, Ted Bundy or something like that. You probably get less business. I bet it has an actual economic effect. I don't, you know what? Okay, I'm not going to use my chaos card here. And I honestly, like, I mean, if I was scrolling through the, if I googled, you know, accountants in Vancouver, and it was like, you know, Bill, Bill Cosby, 
chartered accountant and then like the next one was just like you know ray smith or something like that i'm probably going to ray smith i'm just gonna be honest because i don't know <laughs> it's just at that point i would hope that you maybe would have changed your name you know if you're working in a, the field of le, of a logician at that point you should uh you should recognize the opportunity cost Dude, that, there is a flip side. If you had a name of, like, a beloved celebrity or something like that, you would probably get way more business. You're absolutely right. Like, if your name was, like, Tom Hanks or, like, Jim Carrey or something. like, Well, I guess he's not beloved, but, you know, by a certain demographic. Like, if you were an osteopath named Jim Carrey, oh, my God, you get so much business. Keanu Reeves. The, and especially... People would go to Dr. Keanu Reeves thinking that maybe there's a chance because the name is is so rare. That's that is the flip side. If I mean all other things being equal, if I googled, you know, accountants in my area and there was like the opportunity it was like hey, uh, accountant uh you know, normal name. Let's go with Ray Smith for the controlled variable here. And then it was like Dr. Mahatma Gandhi. I would be like, I'm going to Gandhi. Because, like, not only am I getting professional accounting services, but I'm getting a story, too. I can, I can take, like... I bet he, that guy, you probably have to get more business cards printed than the average person in his line of work. Because people would take, like, ten when they go to the, his office. They'll be like, check it out. Yeah, yeah, my that's my accountant, Brad Pitt. Hey, have I told you that that Brad Pitt's my accountant? Yeah. Oh, you don't believe me? Check this out. You can keep that, by the way. See, I told you. I don't think that applies for for criminals. I don't know, it depends if it's been a while. <laughs> Maybe. Like if it was like, hey, Dr. Bonnie and Clyde. Whoa, how about that? There's a chance. You know what at 100% though? If if I found anybody in any line of work and their name was Joe Pesci, I'm going there. I don't care if it's a proctologist, a nail salon, like, I'm definitely going, like, one, I'm gonna, my whole world is going to be run by Joe Pesci's. Uh, Ryan? Uh, yes, Joe? Uh, we've got a call on the other line. Okay, who is it? Oh, it's Joe Pesci. Oh, sorry, Joe, uh, I got another, I got a call on the other line. It's my financial dominatrix, Josephine Pesci. Nice little callback, huh? Nice little callback. Owns. Bloody? Blood is is really called Bloody Gust. Did they misspell the name of the achievement? No, it's uh, I think it's some wind. All right, slash marker Bloody Gust. 